So today, we are gonna attack something that is an age-old principle. You need to own a home. Renting is for losers. Renting is just paying off somebody else's mortgage. It is wise to be a homeowner. Today, I really wanna reflect on if that is true or have our aunties, uncles, and everyone been lying to us this entire time. So what happens is a home it is not an investment, it is a saving plan for you. Think of your primary residence as your saving account. To buy or not to buy. If you rent, you're making somebody else's rich. You're paying someone else's mortgage. You have heard that growing up. Now coming from an Asian background, we always were taught as a young age, you want to own your home. You want to have a roof over your head no matter what. Now, I was born in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, a lot of people's dreams, their entire dreams in life is to own a home. So should you buy or should you rent? Now, I believe it's a stupid debate. Here's why. Because it depends on where you are at in life. It depends on your income and also your goal. It's like asking, well, should I buy a condo or should I buy a house? Well, it depends. Do you like garden? Do you want to have facility? Do you want to go to have a gym? Do you want to work out in the morning? Do you want that condo lifestyle so it's less maintenance? Or you want to have a, a place, a garden or, or something? Or, or you want your kids running the background? What is it you want? So it's a stupid argument. I understand that buying a home, it is such a major decision. It's probably the most important investment that you ever make in your life. Buy if you are stable and established. Let's say you're close to 30 years old or you're over 30 years old and you have a good career and you have good income coming in that you could afford to buy a home in a good location, in a good neighborhood and still have money left over, you buy. Or as a couple that you're working together, maybe you and your husband and wife both have jobs or you guys are working in a business together, then you buy. You buy because you are starting a family and you want to have a place where you can see your kids grow up. So the first thing that I wish that I knew before buying a home, and I kind of knew it, but I just didn't know to this extent, is that home ownership is not cheaper than renting. And I have to laugh at myself because I have to admit, I literally thought, well, you know, for the same amount that I spend on rent, I can put that into a mortgage. And yeah, sure, like there's some maintenance involved, like there's some landscaping involved, and it's not that big of a deal. Like I actually budgeted 500 extra dollars a month to maintain our new home and property in addition to what we were supposed to pay for a total mortgage and insurance, etc. And it doesn't, let me tell you, it doesn't even come close to what we need to sustain this place. Even though I've heard it over and over again, and a lot of people told me that that home ownership costs a lot and they mention things like landscaping and fixing light bulbs that is just the bare minimum of what needs to get done there is your upfront cost of investment be it your down payment your closing costs all your inspection costs which is just like beyond more than just like what you think of when you think five or ten or twenty percent down and then there's also all kinds of things that you never foresaw like the things you thought you would have to fix when you would have to fix them and the amount it would cost to fix them we largely underestimated and to some degree I'm an overestimator and so it was good that my overestimation was kind of still an underestimation because if I would have not overestimated then it would have been so much more but ultimately it's not just the financial cost up front and just to maintain the whole space it's also the energy and the time that goes into it but hopefully it ends up being a good investment in the long term so you are expected to put a lot up front and it feels like a lot especially as a first-time home buyer and especially as people who tend to live frugally it's like the most money I ever spent in one go I want to talk to all of you out there that are thinking about buying a house right now maybe you saw one of my videos recently about don't buy a house let me explain that to you let me explain to you exactly what I mean by that I'm not saying under any circumstances you would never ever buy a house however I am saying to you that if you're trying to get someplace in your life financially if you're trying to progress financially many of us were taught to buy a home as a way to save money as a safe place to put money part money so that over the next 15 20 
25 or 30 years, sometimes when you go to retire, your house would be paid for, and then you would somehow have equity, equity cash build up in the house. And that somehow would be a way to one, save money, and two, that renting is expensive and the landlord makes all the money. So just to clarify the point, number one, I would tell everybody watching right now, 99% of the people watching right now, you don't buy a house. How many homes could you own? A lot fewer than you can rent. So let's talk about the primary place where you live and you, you, you raise your kids and you have your marriage. Should you own that or should you rent that? I'm gonna to suggest to you that the best thing you can do is rent where you live rent where you live and own what you can rent to others. And the reason I'm saying that to you is because you can actually grow scale in buying rental properties that you can't in owning homes. Okay, if you're a real estate investor, if you love real estate, if you like houses, if you like property, if you like land, if you like this whole concept of creating wealth through real estate, I can leverage multi-family, multiple units, rentals, and grow that much faster, if you will, than I can buying one home at a time, sitting in it for 30 years and creating wealth. What are the advantages of actually renting a home to begin with, and why do so many high-profile people just seem to rent their homes instead of owning them? First of all, in this example, it assumes that the market continues to go up in price every single year over the course of seven years. If the market stays the same or actually drops in price, renting could actually come out ahead and be more advantageous than owning. You'll also come out ahead by renting instead of buying. If you can consistently make more than a 12% return, investing your down payment instead of tying it up in the property. You'll also come out ahead significantly by renting if you only plan to live in the home for one to three years and then plan to move somewhere else. Instead of going and selling and paying a 6% closing cost when you own a home, unless you get really lucky and happen to buy in a rapidly appreciating area where you buy a home and then three years later it's worth like 40% more. But besides that, if you plan to sell the home or only live there for one to three years, renting comes out ahead. So it really takes a lot of assumptions and advantages to really decide which is better in terms of renting versus buying. But the biggest downside I see when buying is that you pretty much just tie up your down payment that could be deployed in a business that could generate you much higher returns. And also for someone who wants to buy but only live there a few years and then sell it, it's a little dangerous to assume that the market will continue going up in such a short period of time to a point where you can either break even or make a profit when you sell. So in most situations, the cost of renting is significantly cheaper than the cost of buying something and then selling it after only a few years. And also in the multi-million dollar price point, sometimes there are situations where renting is just significantly cheaper than owning that property. For instance, I've seen an $8 million home that you can rent for $20,000 per month. Just to give you an idea, the cost of ownership for an $8 million home, including property taxes, mortgage, insurance, and everything else is close to $40,000 per month. That means renting is 50% cheaper than owning and you don't have to tie up a 20% down payment. And you're also not tied down to that home in the event you want to pick up and leave after a year or two. And this is often why you see people like Ty Lopez or Grant Cardone renting their home instead of buying it. It's a lot cheaper for them to spend $20,000 per month and then pick up and go whenever they want and deploy their money in other businesses than it is for them to be tied down in a home, tie up their down payment, have a higher monthly payment, and for cash flow purposes, it just works out a lot cheaper to rent instead of buy. But generally speaking, for those that plan to live in their home for more than seven years, almost always buying is the better, cheaper route to take. When you go and buy a property, you really just lock in the monthly cost of owning that home. You're not gonna have any rent increases, you're not gonna have any crazy landlords out there. You're gonna have total control over your property and 30 years from now, you're gonna own it outright. You also get all the tax advantages of owning real estate and you can build up equity in an appreciating asset. However, when you buy, you're really tying yourself down to that property, you're tying up your money and if you need to sell at a year or two, you're really at the mercy of the market where you might sell at a loss unless the home price goes up higher than your closing costs and what you're into it. The long term, owning a property tends to be a lot cheaper just the longer you live there. So today, we are gonna attack something that is an age-old principle. You need to own a home 
Renting is for losers. Renting is just paying off somebody else's mortgage. It is wise to be a homeowner. Today, I really want to reflect on if that is true or have our aunties, uncles and everyone been lying to us this entire time. I saw and I'm sure some of you guys have seen that Elon Musk has doubled down on his own promise to own no houses and he sold five of his mansions. Why he had five mansions I do not know. I'm sure he has more than that. Over 29 million dollars on one house. Yeah he is selling everything that he owns and he wants to become a renter. Hmm what does this billionaire know that we don't know? But that home owning is the most important thing that anybody could ever do in their lives. People want to get on the house ladder, they want to get one house, then they get, they get a bigger house, they get a bigger house, and they get a bigger house, and then have a mortgage until death. Yes, mortgage means until death. <laughs> yes, mort gauge. Mort dead gauge. Don't know. <laughs> but yeah, today I wanted to explore the concept of being a homeowner being the most important thing and also renting being a waste of money and really look at what is the cost versus the benefit of each of the options out there. And I have a feeling that some of you guys might be surprised and probably not many people want you to know this but relying on the idea of properties going up and down particularly when it comes to short amounts of time is not a good way to look at a financial calculation when it comes to being a homeowner versus a renter for example in the last five years in london alone properties have only gone up by 0.35 percent and the average price of a flat in london has gone down by literally minus 5.7 percent according to the property website Zoopla who actually buy and sell properties in London. House prices and house values do fluctuate. There is no guarantee on what the market is going to do particularly in the short term. There is no simple answer to whether you should rent or whether you should buy and it really is up to your personal circumstances. Some of the things you need to consider and I think one of the number one things you need to consider is will you want to move and will you want to move soon? And we live in a world where people are working from blip, flipping Bali and working on yachts and moving around the world. The, today is not the same as it used to be. People used to stay in really stable jobs and work in the 30 year career. That isn't the case anymore. So there was a recent study done by Deloitte of over 10,000 millennials. I can't say millennials, millennials. And they found that 72% gave the answer that they couldn't see themselves in the same job that they are in for the next five years. So if you wanna move to another country, how are you gonna do that if you're a homeowner? If you're young, in your 20s and in your 30s, without a family, with a lot of opportunity before you, that potentially locking yourself into a property might not be the wisest choice because it doesn't allow you to have the freedom and flexibility to maybe pursue alternative opportunities and pursue alternative careers, especially if your resources are going to be tight and if you put everything into home ownership. However, home ownership in general is something that is a longer term investment. They don't say safe as houses for no reason. People always need a home. And if you are someone who needs a home, you need stability, yes, it's definitely a good idea for looking for that place. But in my personal opinion, I would say do not rush do not rush for it to one be an investment there are other ways to invest if you are going to plan to move every five years or every few years it could end up actually becoming more expensive i would also say don't worry about keeping up with the joseph's doing things that everybody else is doing if elon musk is being a renter maybe it's okay if you are as well for a season in many instances mortgages are more of a liability for you than they are an investment Mortgages can suck the life out of you. They can require you take out a massive amount of debt and the debt comes with interest that compounds in the same way that return on your investment compounds. It's gonna drive you further and further into debt as time goes along. For a house to present as much investment potential as possible, you not only need to wait until a good buying opportunity comes along, but also you need to wait until you can pay for a significant portion of the house in cash. You want to have a lot of equity in that house. 
renting until you build up enough cash to pay for a large portion of the house up front and lessen the amount of debt you have to go off into is almost always a wise decision. So unless presented with some kind of extraordinary buying opportunity where you're able to purchase a house well below its true value, you'll be better served by saving your cash for as long as possible in order to avoid the burden and liability of a large mortgage payment. You are a rule one investor. You can take that cash and if you invest it wisely, you can make a rate of return far higher than the growth rate of those houses in that neighborhood. Works out in the end. The last thing that I learned before buying the house actually, but I just want to hit home on that. Another kind of exaggerated statement that people say is that when you're renting, you're throwing all your money away, but when you're buying a house, you're building equity and you're not throwing your money away. Now that's true, but you're still throwing your money away. I already knew this before buying a house, but the reality is you're not building that much equity. And there are a lot of instances where buying a house might not be worth it to you because that monthly mortgage it doesn't all go to your equity I'm gonna break it down for you guys and tell you exactly how much I pay for my mortgage and how much goes to equity for my first ever mortgage payment of $4,400 $600 of that went to property taxes so that is money that I don't get back ever that goes to the government $200 of that was for mortgage insurance because I only put 10% down I have mortgage insurance and then I think 50 to $100 a month goes to home insurance and then $2,600 goes to interest which is what I'm paying the bank that's like a lot of money that gets thrown away at the end of the day that's a lot and then my principal that goes towards paying off my loan is $900 so that is the money that is building me equity out of my $4,400 and what happens is every month that you pay it down, you pay a little bit less in interest and a little bit more goes towards your principal. Now my first month, I'm paying $2,600 in interest and $900 in principal. When I get to my 360th month of home ownership, I will pay $13.15 in interest and $3,506 in principal. So basically it's like you're paying so much to the bank first and then it's slowly over time just like daylight saving starts to add more daylight to your day you start to get to pay more money into your equity so even though I bought a house and it's really cool and everything I'm still throwing away like three thousand dollars a month that I don't get that's either going to the government or the bank and ultimately that's why I decided to get a townhouse rather than a condo because now I have two roommates that have moved into my house and they're paying for about two thousand dollars worth of the mortgage so out of my pocket I'm actually paying about twenty four hundred dollars a month and fifteen hundred dollars of that is money I'm kind of throwing away that I'll never get to see again. So if you're watching this and you're not close to buying a house at all, you shouldn't feel bad about renting. You can just be saving your money and renting and you can still be building wealth and you can eventually like buy a home or not. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got money in the bank and a roof over your head, even if you don't own that roof, like you're good and life's good and we're all gonna be all right.